Um, I think. Hey, Austin, do you mind pulling up the YouTube link up there just to see for live? I think uh, I don't know where it is now. John might need to uh, turn his speaker volume all the way down in the settings. Oh, in Zoom. Because John, I think you're listening to Source Connect right now. Yes, so, I'm listening to Source Connect. Go to your Zoom preferences. Um, yep. And then Oops. go to audio. And go to speaker. Go to speaker, and then um, turn down the output volume all the way. Okay, hang on one second. Where are my Zoom preferences? Are you on the Zoom app? I am. It Ooh. says my microphone is muted. So it's it's in the deeper settings. I don't know. I don't know. Should I do I have to leave the meeting to get to those settings? No, no. So on the top right in the by the Apple symbol on your main OS X bar, there should be the about zoom and the preferences below that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like where you'd see file and yeah. that sort of thing, top left of the screen. Of which, see, I don't, I see safe driving mode. Yeah, he's on his, oh, phone. He's on his phone. The phone settings, yeah, I have yeah. no idea. Oh. Okay. Yep. I don't think I'm hearing anything from my phone. Okay. I have the volume turned all the way down. Okay. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, there's nothing coming out of my phone. So I just turned the volume down. Do, 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 can you can you see me, John? Yes, I can. Cool, perfect. Um, can you pull up? I texted you the link. Can you just pull the YouTube so I can see some comments up there if we need to? I texted it to you. Yep, that one. Um, let's see if it's working, and we'll be going. We are so close. Yes. All right, cool. We are in a Zoom webinar, I guess, but also on YouTube, 30 seconds behind. And we've got, <laughs> Brock, how many people do we have from Reunion Alumni on here? Looks like 20 people just signed on in the last couple minutes. All right. Can, is it, can they hear us? Can, you want us to want to do a dummy check? Is, can is everyone there? hear everyone? <laughs> check one, check one. Um, I've got a good morning from Australia, from Mark. We can hear you. <laughs> Someone says my favorite part of every Zoom meeting is the first 10 minutes of figuring <laughs> things out. <laughs> BJ. I'm glad I'm not in charge of this one. So true. Um, let's see. Sounds like a yes, then. Everybody says we can hear you, but we can't see you. Um, I think sometimes... Can anybody see us? <laughs> is that like across the board? Just can't see. Uh, we can hear you, not see. You I mean, my camera is on. Uh, <laughs> no one can see. What the heck? <laughs> okay, hold on. I have to test this on mine then, because I don't. No, I can. I can see you. Because you can see yeah. me, and yes. Austin, you can see me, Maybe right? Maybe as the host, I need to pin. But can uh, it pin? Is spotlight video the? Let's try this. How about now? Can everyone see? John, there we go. Okay. Yes. And Nathan, if you talk, does it switch? You, you're going to have to switch it on the switcher. Well, I I'm know not... for YouTube, but for the panelists. Oh. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Let me see here. That's a good point. Um, we'll have to put it on the audio. I can just do a split screen. Actually, because your no. audio is not coming in, it's never going to feature you. No. They're just <laughs> not going to see me. That's okay. You know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll move it back and forth every once in a while. There's Nathan, everybody. Can you see him? Hello. Doesn't he look great? Hi, everybody. <laughs> so okay, no worries. Let me let me actually put it on gallery view here. Can you guys all see? Hello. Can you guys see? Oops. There we go. Oh yeah, people can people can go. see me. All, all right. right, we'll just keep you both in split screen there. Perfect. Wow, we did it, guys. <clears throat> Um, so you, Brock, so you're going to switch between me and him on the switcher, mm -hmm. but then everybody on Zoom is fine? Correct. Okay. Cool. Thanks, guys. Okay, so <laughs> that was like 10 minutes of sound check. Yep, live. <laughs> um, so maybe some of you joined us like a couple hours ago. We did some songs and hangs with, with John Mark, and it was great, and I had a blast, man.
super fun. It's fun. I loved it. Um, I was thinking for this session, um, kind of a, maybe a different vibe, but um, we have this event called a reunion that you guys may or may not know about, and it's one of my favorite things we get to do every year. And right now, we were today we were planning on selling tickets like this week, and because of COVID and all the uncertainty with big gatherings in the fall, we or put the pause buttons on and it just felt really good to do something anyways and so we thought it'd be fun to bring back somebody one of our reunion friends from the past and just have a more open-ended fun just conversation so a bunch of you guys are on the chat on zoom with us and so i think we're we'll chat and then brock is over here in the corner and <laughs> brock can see the chat so he'll be kind of talking with you guys and uh we actually can kind of like somehow bring you into our conversation for a moment as a panelist, right? Is that how? Yes. Yes. So. Ask questions through Zoom and then, um, <laughs> yeah, we'll see if we can maybe bring one or two of you in. So and I think, yeah, you guys are attendees and then we can, when it makes sense, we can like beam you in <laughs> magically to our little combo. Uh, yeah. And so we had this idea a couple of days ago and we're just going to try it out. If it doesn't work, hey, whatever. It doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyways, so last year we were, last October we were all together in a field. Um, so fun. Tell me what your, just from your memory, like what was your experience at reunion? And just be fun to th remember the good times of being able to be together and be around campfires, food. <laughs> yep, my experience. It just felt, um, I'm trying not to be cheesy here, but it just kind of felt like home. You know, like I think uh, having been involved in a number of like spiritual movements and things like when I was young, I used to go to a lot of church conferences. I got to the point where those didn't feel I mean, they were fine. You know what I mean? But they didn't feel like where I belonged. And the reunion was one of the places the first time in a long time. I was like, oh, I feel like I can be my whole self here, you know, and uh, and we just loved it. My, I remember my wife loved it, you know, and I loved the the fellowship probably as much as uh you know the worship or any of the activities you know just being around people the conversations you know you don't get to have those all the time a lot of times we're just in constant motion you know doing our thing and so just to be with like-minded people and super chill people who are willing to have conversations that maybe you don't feel like you can have with all your friends you know totally and maybe that's the way I put it. Like I have certain friends I feel like I can have I can have certain conversations with, and there are other friends that are like I got to be tempered. I don't, you know. And I feel like at the reunion, it's like, oh, I can be myself, and be my whole self, or a version of it, you know. Mm. So, obviously, I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we. I felt so excited because we took the year off last year, so 2019. Yep. We we mm -hmm. took a year off and. I've felt so so ready to get going, and Brock and I yeah. were working mm -hmm. on all the plans and everything. And then it was that you know sinking feeling that the odds are going down, that things are going to go the usual. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, we're still hopeful. So just to throw it out there, we don't know for sure whether it can or can't happen. Um, it really depends on a lot of the legal issues with large gatherings, and I think each state is going to mm -hmm. be making their own you know policies. So we don't know what those are. So we are in yeah. hold with the farm owner and the dates are still sort of, yeah, they're held, but we don't know. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think, John, what was sort of plan B, I guess, when Brock and I were talking about all of this was, well, let's have those conversations that we had on, in the field. I guess we can do them online because <laughs> that's yep. and that, that became like a big sprint to figure out how mm -hmm. to do this. Um, yep. So to me, it, it could be really cool to to have some of the some of those conversations we had in the field we can have those together and maybe yeah. we can do them every week and yeah and have more um just a lot more of them instead of once a year um so i, th I think that's that's my heart today um i think we can go anywhere with this this conversation but i'd love to hear i don't know i was putting myself in your shoes and thinking about your tour that you had set up and how your tour in a way represents a lot of our plans, just like mm -hmm. we had reunion set up, you had your tour and 
everybody watching, everybody had their thing, you know, their plan. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to hear how you have processed having to let that go and kind of throw out the playbook for 2020 and what that, yeah, just what that, your, your experience has been like. Yep. So, I mean, initially, so we're, you know, we're planning a tour for like a year, right? Right. And um, it's, a, it's a lot of work. You've done that before. You, you got to yeah. book the venues and the promoters and the routing, and you got to make sure you're here on this day, here on this day, here on this other, you know what I mean? Like, um, and, and once all the puzzle pieces are together, then you like, there's the mad dash to like spread the word, right. make sure people know about it. Because these days it's really interesting. Everyone's sort of fragmented in their own little community. So it's hard. Like I have people all the time will play like in Chicago, they'll be like, let me know when you come back to Chicago. And I was like, we were literally there last week. You know, right. I'm like, I put it on my Instagram and <laughs> Twitter to tell you. and the email list. Like I did it all. Right. But it's just, that's just the nature of the, of the beast, right? That's just the way it is right now. So you work really hard to spread the word. And then, um, you know, we're, we're doing tour rehearsals and it starts to seem like this thing is getting really serious. And all of a sudden I'm having conversations with my team. I'm like, Hey, what's going on here? Like, um, we've obviously got to sell enough tickets to make it worthwhile. So are we going to do this tour and no one's going to come because, uh, they're afraid they're going to get sick. Like, or are, even worse than the next day, the conversation is like, are we being irresponsible for booking this tour and bringing people together and they might get sick. And then the next day the, um, we're like, should we cancel? And then the right. next day the conversation is, well, the, You've got contracts with, you know, 35 venues, so good luck getting out of those. <laughs> then the next day is, yeah, all the venues can't. <laughs> Jeez. So, um, you know, honestly, that day was like actually somewhat of a, re a relief because I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, are we being irresponsible or are we going to go do a tour and be playing for six people a night? Which, right, that's fine, but it also means like we're going to be eating, um, you know, rice and beans for a year to pay for that tour pay the tour off yeah pay the tour off you know um and, and and you feel like it's a little bit wasted when you're like you did all this work and you weren't able to fully enjoy uh you weren't able to fully do what you set out to do you know and then of course you're like gosh i hope people don't get sick because we brought them out anyway so it was nice to have all those questions answered it wasn't the answer i would have liked but it was really nice to know like okay the decision is not in my court anymore, thank God. I don't have to worry about it. But, so obviously there's a little bit of disappointment, but mostly I was just glad that the stress of having to make those decisions was handed off to somebody else. So then it was sort of recalibrating. I was like, well, what are we doing now? Right. You know, what am I gonna be doing at my house? So like I started filming videos. I've been trying to post one a day, um, doing just songs, you know, new songs, old songs. and. I'm learning how to work my gear that I've had at home that I didn't know how to work, yeah. but I had it, <laughs> you know, but totally. I didn't know how to work, you know? And so the, one of the positive things is I've learned how to like do some things technically that I didn't know how to do before with cameras and recording gear and editing software and stuff. So that's been kind of fun actually learning how to do that. Um, you know, and mostly just trying to stay in touch with people, you know? So we rescheduled everything to next fall, so I hope come you know uh, August I'm not back in that position where I'm like, oh, are we gonna are people gonna get sick if they come to our shows? Right. Are we gonna do these shows and no one's gonna be there? Do we need to move it? And you know, so I'm trying not to worry. The truth is, like, there are people who are in really bad situations. I'm not in a bad situation. I'm I'm in an uncomfortable situation, frustrating situation. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm not like like I'm not about to lose my job. No one I know is, well, I, I have known a few people who got the virus, but I haven't known anyone with any major health issues who is any major risk, you know? So mm -hmm. we're doing pretty good overall. Like I really have no reason to complain. So honestly, I've, I've tried to take the role of encourager, you know, I've tried to encourage people because of, there are people who need it more than me. And so that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of been the role I've been trying to, assume in this season i've been writing long instagram posts and i hope i don't come off like i'm trying to be a guru or something but like 
I'm getting older. I'm trying to use some of these years of wisdom and help people out and encourage people. So I've been doing more of that kind of stuff. I've, I've been yeah. loving it, man. I, 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 love, I love the guru energy coming from you. But the, you know, it's like why I wanted mm-hmm. to have like a longer, longer convo here today. I, <laughs> I'm just so curious to know, like, like, what's the thing, the thought that wakes you up in the morning, or like, he, or when you, if you wake up in the middle of the night, that just is just the thing that's front of mind in in that space in your in the spiritual yeah. so, uh, you know, spiritual mm-hmm. realm. What's what's yep. the thing that's just wanting to come out that's coming out in your posts? I think for me it's um, gratitude. And like, I mean, you and I talked about a year ago and like I made some big changes, you know, and I was talking to you Mm -hmm. about it. And at the time you were talking about the reunion, which ended up not doing, but which was fine because we were in such a mess. (laughs) Anyway, you know, um, and um, I took that time. I, I realized like I didn't have a vision for what I was doing. Like I didn't know what I was doing. We were just making music, which is fine. Mm hmm. But at a point, you're like, I got kids, I got a wife, I got a community, I got to pay the bills, I got to help some other guys pay their bills. Uh, You know, like, um, I got to, I got to have a reason to do the things that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Like, like, cause it's fun. You know how much fun touring is. Like, I love touring. But if I'm going to leave home, you know, for six weeks or whatever, like, there's, I got to have a real reason at this point to, uh, to leave home. You know, and uh, and so I spent a couple of months even just sort of like contemplating, like, what is my purpose? Like, why am I even here? Like, why does anyone like there's so many songs in the world? Like, why in the world do I need to be writing songs? Who needs to even hear my songs? Like, Mm -hmm. why? Why should anyone care? You know, like and ultimately, like, what do I have? Um, that I can offer people like how does what I do serve people? You know, and I spent a couple hours a day just um, contemplating that and going through little exercises, writing in my journal. And it started really um, kind of uh, really kind of spacey, you know, like and, and, and over time it became more and more focused Till finally I brought it down to a couple of words. One word is in gratitude is sort of the simple word, you know, um, and and I've decided that like my purpose in the world is reenchantment, mm. uh, reenchantment. I think the world is begging to be reenchanted, and I think that um, I love technology, mm. and I'm not anti-tech, but I think technology, and I also love science. But I think technology and science have halfway convinced us that like there's nothing left to be discovered, and that we understand right. the way everything works. And I actually think that that's further from the truth. I actually think that technology and science, the more things they answer for us the more we realize we don't know you know and someone asked me the other day like what is what is your favorite god story what is your favorite god story and like this was my this is just what popped into my head like my god story is that i exist Mm. is that i actually exist because if you think about it like look at the universe right look at the universe like the closest inhabitable or possibly inhabitable inhabitable planet is um it would take us six thousand four hundred years to get there with our current technology right as far as we can tell there is no life between here and there and likely there's no life there either i mean if i'm being totally honest i think it's impossible that there's no life anywhere you know there's got to be something else out there like i'm not so arrogant to think that what's (laughs) happening in my world is the only thing happening but but when you look at the universe like People are very rare. Life is extremely rare. Like it's it's an extremely rare phenomenon. It doesn't happen almost anywhere in the universe, but it happens here. And like how unbelievably amazing is it? How what what an amazing privilege it is to get to exist, to get to participate mm-hmm. in life itself when life is not happening most places in the universe. Mm-hmm. You know? And like to me like the greatest miracle of all is that God ever dreamed us up to begin with like that I am even here is the greatest miracle you know and it's really easy to lose sight of that you know and you're just walking through your everyday life totally life seems so common but there is no such thing as normal life there is nothing common about life there's no common life you know and so I think 
more than anything uh, these days, I'm trying to be like super present and uh, super aware of the privilege it is to exist, to experience life at all, mm. you know. And I just want to be so thankful because life is like really short too. And I think like the greatest tragedy, I mean, there's a lot of tragedy in the world, but the greatest tragedy is to live and never fully appreciate what it is you've been given, you know. Mm. The opportunity to breathe, the opportunity to see, to like have relationships and talk. Oh. Like those things seem so normal, so common, but they're actually not common at all. Like they're right. insanely rare. Right. You I mean, know, I mean, isn't that I don't like, know if I, No, but isn't I just going to jump off that because yeah, yeah. we were talking a little bit earlier about how even when you think back to how we used to be at, at a concert together or at a yeah. at dinner at a restaurant. And how mm -hmm. it was so normal, and all of a sudden now, we look back at it as like we didn't appreciate it. It was there. We had it all. We had it the whole yeah. time. And that I feel like there's a, amidst all the suffering and pain of the, mm -hmm. of what the virus is doing to communities around the world, and all the, all the loss and heartbreak from it. They're also in that loss is an opportunity for reenchantment. What you're saying. Yeah. Of when I sit together with a friend on a porch, it's gonna feel all new again. Because yeah. all of a sudden that was taken from me, mm -hmm. and I don't know. I, I I think I think we don't even begin to know how many things we take for granted until something crazy dramatic like this just shuts it all down. And like yeah. even just me and you getting to talk, mm. it would have been back pre-COVID. It would have been like, oh, you know, we're pretty busy and we got this stuff going. But now I'm. I mean, this has been the <laughs> highlight of like I've been looking forward to this all week. And I don't know. Like, <laughs> me too. I just I feel like that. There is some sort of gift in mid, in the midst of this crazy like crazy loss and the crazy pain yeah. um, to be able to see things again, and yeah. I, I just feel that yeah reenchantment feels like the right word. Uh, mm -hmm. I think totally. I don't know. What do you does that does that <coughs> bring any other thoughts? <coughs> yeah. Well, man, I think that. Um, I've been thinking a lot about this. We woke up the other day early on and we were, you know, you're sort of like half terrified. At the same time, you don't really know what's going on. You're like, is this a dream? And, you know, and we feel fine. We seem fine. You know, we hear about what's going on. You know, we don't know what's going to happen to us. But we, my wife and I wake up early and we're like making our coffee, looking out the window and it is so quiet. It's so quiet. And I was like, and I asked my wife, it's like, why does this feel in a weird way like Christmas? Hmm. You know, it's like, that's the weirdest feeling. Like, that's not what I would expect. Like, and, and she said, there is something kind of precious about it. And I was like, what do you mean precious? She's like, everyone has stopped. Everyone has stopped. And everyone is, at least in this moment, is thinking about what happens next. You know, and there is something about like, a, we're obviously all vulnerable but we're vulnerable on different levels, right? Mm -hmm. Some of us are more vulnerable than others, you know, but at the same time, we are all sort of vulnerable and we're all admitting and thinking about our vulnerability together. And there is something about corporate vulnerability that endears us to one another, you know? And so obviously, like, I don't like that people are sick. I don't like that people are dying. I don't like that people are afraid for their jobs or where they're going to live, how they're going to pay their bills. I'm not... I'm not happy about any of that, so I don't want that to be misconstrued, but there is something beautiful about the realization that we're all vulnerable. And mm -hmm. it's not a thing that wasn't previously a thing, right? Like right. mortality. You know, like, I mean, life is a little bit more dangerous now than it was a few weeks ago, right? It definitely is. I'm not trying to downplay it. But at the same time, like, We've always been mortal. All of a sudden, we're thinking about this together. There's something about that that I think is significant. You know, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it's going to mean for the future. Likely in two years, everyone's going to forget about it. I don't know. That's the way. That's the way it goes. But there is an opportunity to see people in a different light. Mm -hmm. There is an opportunity to reach out to people you love. There is an opportunity to feel some solidarity. You know, and to, gosh, I don't know, maybe in a yeah. way we didn't have before. Yeah, it feels like there's a vulnerability that's just present 
yeah. we're like more aware of it. I, I think there's yeah. like a lot of masks and like sort of the illusion of the certainty that the, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and the world's going to be just like it was yesterday. Yeah. Which is not true, but it, there's certain seasons where it feels that way. It's like, well, yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's this profound change, and all of the mm-hmm. norms that we thought that were like certain are gone. And you're like, oh mm-hmm. wow, it's there is no certainty like that. And it's there's there's I'm way more vulnerable than I thought I was. Mm-hmm. And, and then going to like a grocery store and like expecting there to be food, and there was a run on the grocery stores in L.A. and there was like mm-hmm. empty shelves everywhere. <laughs> You're like, wait, yeah. how? What world is that? Po- like, how is that happening? But yeah, of course it could happen. But mm-hmm. I just don't. My, I don't yeah. know. There's something so vulnerable about that feeling. Uh, totally. Well, and you know, it's really interesting. Like, I was thinking about this. Like, I, I work with multiple generations of people. You know, and I think about my grandparents and their generation. I think about my dad and his generation. And they're, uh, it's almost impossible to understand somebody without like. Uh, taking a a look at their history, you know? Like, there are things my grandparents went through that I will never fully understand. There are things my dad and his generation went through that I'll never fully understand. You know, I was reading a book. I'm a big Stephen King fan. And for I found a book, uh, like, on the dollar shelf called Hearts in Atlantis. They'd made a movie about it a while back. I haven't seen the movie. Who knows if it's even similar to the book. But the whole premise is that it's during the 60s, during the Vietnam War. And um, these guys in their dorm are obsessed with the game Hearts, the card game Hearts, right? And they're so obsessed with it. And by the way, you know, Stephen King, almost all of his books are an, <laughs> it's a metaphor for addiction, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, and so he's, they're playing Hearts and, uh, you know, each night they're like, I could play another hand. They're playing for quarters and dollars or whatever. It's not even big money, right? Or I can go to bed or I can go study. And they're like, after this game, I'll go study. And what they realize is they've gone nights and nights and nights without studying. And several of them are in danger of failing, right? But the thing is, they know if they fail, they're going to get shipped off to Vietnam. Hmm. You know, they're going to get shipped off to Vietnam. And so literally this card game, um, they're losing their lives over this card game, over something that seems so stupid, but they just can't stop playing it because the thing is a distraction from their lives. You know, and so the thing that's a distraction from their lives is about to send them in deeper <laughs> right. into real life, you know? And I realized after reading that book, I was like, God, I've misunderstood my dad and his generation. I've mm. really misunderstood them because there's never been a moment in my life where I feel like if I didn't live up, if I didn't uh, succeed, you know, like then I was going to get shipped off to a pointless war where. I could die and a bunch of my friends died, you know, and so my dad, a bunch of his, my dad didn't go to Vietnam, you know, but had he not been in school, you know, like, it's like, I have no, we have no context for that. Mm -hmm. I think about my grandfather's generation, you know, you had the, the plague and not the plague, but the, this, this, the flu influenza is like 1918 and you had world war one and you had world war two and you had the great depression in between those two, you know, like. And maybe I'm just talking too much about history. But, like, I just don't think we know what it's like. During the Great Depression, children, elderly people were dying of malnutrition. They were dying because they couldn't get any food it's like that we in the United States. You right, know what right. I mean? And so, like, and here's my point. Like, so, like, my dad's generation would say their parents' generation never said I love you. You know, my grandfather never said I love you to my dad. And I could be like, that's terrible. I can't, what type of person is that? But the truth is he really loved my dad. It's just, he's a depression kid, right? Mm-hmm. The Great Depression, like, um, so the way you showed your family that you loved them was you worked because work was so scarce, you know, all of your energy went into that. And that's, that made them who they were in a lot of ways, you know? Anyway, I just think, I just, I just think it's really interesting how these types of things come to define who we are and I, you know, and I, and gosh, I mean, I don't know. I guess this is part of living in the world is we all have these, you know, and how we deal with them sort of defines who we are, I guess. Totally. Yeah. You know? I heard somebody say that pro- progress, human progress and like culture doesn't cha- change in like a linear like progression, that it has these yeah. crazy exponential change moments. And you're, I think yeah. you're. You were talking about that, you know, World War II, Vietnam, and we're, I think it, it's hard to have perspective, but I think we're in one of those yeah. exponential changes. Everything's swirling yeah. around, and I want to 
like I want to try to understand it. I find that like I wake up and I'm if I can just figure it out. Yeah. Like there's some secret that maybe if a lot of smart people are figuring out and I just need to be smart like them. And yeah. I'm like I feel like I'm chasing my tail you know, on the hamster mm-hmm. wheel but today I don't know I'm, I'm I feel this like we're in we're finally aware again of our we're in the wilderness wandering. And mm-hmm. yet like the the temple is with us. Like we don't need like mm-hmm. the, God is with us right now in the wilderness and we're all kind of we're we're in that all the time but we're not that aware of <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I, I it, it just feels good to we don't have to understand and mentally mm-hmm. get this moment and try to figure it out that we can be present in mm-hmm. the mystery and in this you know crazy moment, you know. But yeah. I don't know that that's been I think that's my heart for even doing this is that we can just feel the moment and acknowledge the feelings in it and not, we can throw out ideas, but we're not, there's no like report card, like whether we got it right Mm -hmm. or like we figured it out. Um, It just feels good to just talk about it. Talk about the Mm -hmm. whiplash. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Mm. Definitely, definitely feel the the wandering feeling a little, (laughs) little bit. Yeah. I I know it's weird, uh, and I l- like I said, like I don't in any way like that people are hurting, like not at all, not at all. But a, there is something in me that loves it when everything is sort of like there's almost like a blank canvas, you mm-hmm. know. No one knows what to expect, you know, and sort of like all of a sudden you have the opportunity to reimagine your life, right. you know. And there's something fascinating about that to me. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I was talking to a friend last night about this. We were talking about how the the, fir- the first couple of weeks of the quarantine felt very much like we're on defense. We're mm-hmm. we have enough food. Like I started buying weird stuff. Started buying <laughs> beans and, <laughs> and bread and and there was this yeah this kind of hunker down. You know you're in defense mode and yeah. and I feel in the last couple of weeks just this sort of embracing the new limitations. And mm-hmm. I feel like on offense again, but it, it's offense, but with, with this totally new like constraints that like, mm-hmm. we're talking online because we can't be together. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on, I think you mentioned this earlier, but creativity can thrive with constraints. It can help. Yep. And I don't know, I, I wonder w- w- you as an artist, I so respect you know your, the art that you bring to the world, and I'm curious to know how you think uh, your art in particular, but then also on broader, like how is how is COVID and the the virus sort of moment going to change art and ex- you know expression? Yep, man. Well, I can't remember who said this, but uh, who said that uh, necessity is the mother of invention? You know, and so many exciting things happen because uh, you're in a difficult place and you got to figure out another way right. to make something happen. You know, like this is not entirely like this, but there's a band I used to really love from um, many years ago. Um, they're still really great. What are they called? The guy sings really soft. It's sort of like, remember when the folk thing just oh, like absolutely um, exploded? Um, 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 not from sleep- San Diego. Yes. Sorry, I can't uh, think, but. Uh, 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 uh. Iron and Wine? It? Yes, Iron and Wine. Yeah, and he's been touring oh. under his own name, but <laughs> Iron and Wine, and he talks about how they ask him why he sings the way he sang on those, because those first records are like, yeah. you feel like he's right here and he's whispering. He's like, well, he's I a- recorded all those at my house because we had just had kids and my kids were asleep. You know? And he's like, I really just didn't want to wake them up. Right. And it's like that, you know, that limitation defined his sound and made them who they were and they're like a huge band for a little while they right. I mean they probably still are i just have no idea what's happening in the world right. you know but like your limitations can totally trigger things in you that will cause um they push you to places where you have to do things that you didn't realize you could do totally you know and so i don't know specifically i mean i do know for me like I didn't know how to use um, Logic on my computer, you know. And now I could record an acoustic record in my room here. And I mean, we recorded the whole album here, but I had engineers and right. other musicians and producer like 
here at the house, but like I could do my own little project now. I would never have sat down and learned that otherwise because I could always call Jacob to come over and right. do it. And he's way better than me. You know what I mean? But like Jacob can't come over. So it's just me in the room. And like my first little videos, the sound is not great and it's better and worse, but it's overall getting better because I'm learning. I never would have learned how to do that. I'm even editing some of my own videos. I, I don't know if you saw that Christ Jesus video. I'm yeah. hoping it didn't give somebody a seizure. Like, but I did all of that myself. And I had no, like, I don't know how. Do you even have plugins for, I don't even know what, what this video is like. Like, I have no language for it because I do nothing about it. But I'm like, how can I make the thing flicker? I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to stretch it out. And I'm going to just chop it by hand because I don't know the, the thing. And so it's blinking but it's not right on it's different every time and it's hopping all over the screen it's like this is so bad it might be good <laughs> you know so like i edited my own video for the first time in my life you know so all of a sudden like not doesn't mean i'm going to be a video person i was like i have a little bit of a skill now like mm -hmm. i can actually do some things you know so i don't know what that means on a on a large scale but there there's always opportunity you know, there's always opportunity and, um, you know, anything you do accomplish during this time is worth, um, 10 times more than it would be during in normal life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's really hard to get anything done right now, but anything you do get done will be worth so much right. more, you know? So it's almost like you need to, because you have to, obviously you need to look at it as an opportunity and not as a uh, setback. Yeah. Totally, you know, because there is opportunity in it, and if you see the opportunity, you're gonna be, you're gonna be ahead. I mean, I don't know who we're trying to get ahead of, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I th I think I hear you saying. Um, well, when you brought up the iron and wine example, it made mm -hmm. me think of. There's a book called How Music Works. I don't know if you've ever uh, seen my favorite book. You know, yeah. okay, so you know about it. He like talks yep. about. You think it's so easy to have this bias that we as creatives, uh, yeah have this unique sound that's like we patented and owned and he's like well maybe a no. bit but nah not really and he, and then yeah. he just goes through all the genres we know but then she connects it that it was created out of a venue a room and the room yeah. shapes the sound it's the invisible yeah. band member right and mm -hmm. so when you said that i was like oh man i wonder how that happens with us not being able to be in proximity right now but, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I don't know how to think about it across the board, but with music, I'm, yeah. I'm so curious to know how being quarantined in either our homes or limiting gathering sizes, you know, yeah. how does Coldplay continue to be Coldplay if they're not doing stadium tours? How is this yeah. going to shape their sound? Mm -hmm. um, how is it going to change what we're doing with United Pursuit, what you're doing? Yeah. And I don't know. I, I, it feels pretty exciting to me. I, I, it is I don't exciting. Know. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you've watched a lot of the like church like um, broadcasts, but at first a lot of churches are like, we're going to do our big worship thing and they're on the stage yeah. and nobody's there. <laughs> and like, this is coming through your phone and you're like, yeah. what is this? Cool. I know. I was like, I can't, I can't feel the kick drum or the crash cymbal. Like, I love all that. I can't feel any of it through my right. phone. It's like you try to do what you've always done. It doesn't have the same effect. You know, to me, it's like, you know, like uh, our worship pastor's just been on, you know, we've been doing just Instagram live on Sunday morning, you know, and just play a couple songs on the guitar because that's the moment we're in. Right. But there's something really sweet about it, mm -hmm. you know, like you're just not going to have the lights and the sound and all the like right. big elements in your house, you know, but it's also, it's, I mean, you know, I'm sure you agree with me. It's also like those things are also like. A crutch anyway right you know it's like i mean i like big lights and sound when i'm playing a show but it's like if you need those then it's sort of like is it a show worth <laughs> you know what i'm saying like right. the, you know what i'm saying right. but um but it is really interesting um yeah yeah it makes really, me really interesting it makes me think about there's some sort of leveling that happens when i mean i'm not i like Coldplay. i'm not gonna you know oh hey I'm gonna I'm gonna say hi. Hey, you're live. There's lots of people watching you right now. Do you want to come say hey? Yeah. Come on, say hi. Uh -huh. There's probably like 
a thousand people watching this right now. <laughs> there could be. <laughs> mm. uh, are you going to hide? They all see you hiding. <laughs> You're going to say, hey. <laughs> mm-hmm. How's not going to school? I uh, know. How is not going to school? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, Aww. she misses her friends. I know. Well, hey, baby girl, we're doing a thing. I love you. Thanks okay, for. Okay, but I'll want, be out in a little bit. I want you to take us to the park. All right, we'll see. That sounds like a good plan. <laughs> I think my daughter asked the same thing today. So. Bye, honey, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, she's precious. We have this. We have the this greenway, which has been really nice because you can go walking and not run into anybody. And there's a creek. And they have a little, like, um, <laughs> we let them bring shovels and stuff out there, and they've built a fort down by the creek in the park. <laughs> so they want to go there every day. But it's nice because we get out of the house, and there's nobody there. You know? So, see, those are kind of things. We, I would never do, I would never really do those types of things. Yeah. Otherwise, you know? So this is really interesting. Yeah, it's been fun. In, in L.A., normally you just don't go many places because the traffic's so terrible. All yeah. of a sudden, we just get in the car and drive like what well, would take three hours. We can do it in 50 minutes, and we're driving on some back road in a mountain. It, yeah, we can't really go anywhere. All the trails are closed, but we at least can see stuff. And it's yep. L.A. feels so weird right now because you can go, yeah, go really quick. That's amazing. Um, I'm trying to think. I, don't, I think I lost the thought that I had, but I have a, plenty more. I have, like, notes of just <laughs> thoughts and questions for you. So, okay, here's one. You can pass on any of these, of course. Sure. Right. Uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, the call Nashville 2007. Oh, gosh. Right? Pass, and, pass. No, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> and, uh, well, we were just kind of like, that was when I first heard John Mark the first yeah. time. But I'm curious if you could, like, magically go back mm-hmm. in time with what you've learned and gone through now 2020. What If you have the mic again and there's all those people sweating and maybe passing out in the heat what what what, do we, what would you say what would be the message that you could bring back to 2007 man at least I, for me i felt like there was some massive race to like fix the entire world you know i was like there's some sort of massive race to fix the entire world like we're gonna fix the whole world you know and I wish, I'd, I wish I could go back and tell myself, like, to chill out a little bit. That, like, this is a sprint. Or this is, excuse me, this isn't a sprint. It's right. a marathon. Mm-hmm. You know? And that, you know, your whole life doesn't depend on this one thing that's going to happen or not happen. But, like, life, what matters most in life is things you do every day. Right. You know? Because I kept waiting. I don't know what it is. I kept waiting for this one moment or this one thing to happen that's going to bring all life into... This is going to make all of life make sense to me. Right. You know, and like, I mean, to be honest, like, this is going to make me sound like such an emo kid, but after uh, after the call, I remember I went back to my hotel and I literally cried because I was like, I don't... You know, you're looking forward to this whole thing for so long. Right. And then I was like, I don't... I think this was fun. I think this was good, but I don't know that we accomplished anything. <laughs> you know, mm. and we we did. Like I know we want to put down, you know, prayer and all that kind of stuff. You know, but it was like I was like, what did I just give my whole life to? You know, and then you you're up in front of singing in front of like eighty thousand people or something and. You walk off the stage and you're like, that didn't feel any different than right. any other time, <laughs> you know? And uh, I just remember thinking like, uh, uh, man, that was a moment for me when I was like, I need to, oh man, what am I trying to say here? I know it's well. That was a moment. It's well back. There's a moment when I realized like, I need to, ha- I, I got to have my own faith, you know? I got to figure out Christianity, spirituality for myself. I've been waiting for someone else to tell me how it works. And I'm going to have to work this out myself. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, so that was a really interesting moment 
for me. Yeah. I don't know. I knew like I knew the How We Love song was gonna be a big song that night. And it's not because like I thought, oh, this is gonna be a huge song. I mean, we've been playing. I've been playing it for years, right? You know, and I wouldn't have even chosen to play it. Um, I would have played other songs, but they wanted that song, and I just something in me knew that like that was the song that people were gonna want to hear mm-hmm. that night. You know, mm. I don't know, man. Sorry, I'm just no. reminiscing. No, oh, I, I, I'm. I bring it up because I just I keep thinking about it, and I. I think I relate to you on how you walked away from the event going, I gotta, I gotta figure this thing out. Mm-hmm. I gotta go on a journey myself. Mm-hmm. I don't well, know the way to the describe is, it. There's something, I feel, I relate to that because I, I was there mm-hmm. and I had that similar feeling after. Yeah. But, well, like you, we really assume that like, because someone has a platform, like someone's on the stage. I mean, I think we're all a little bit more, the internet has helped. You know, I think we're a little bit more realistic these days. Like. Just because you're a good speaker, just because you have some good information, just because you're a good singer, just because you write good songs, doesn't mean that you know anything more about God than anybody else. Right. I mean, it really doesn't. And I, I'm not putting down pastors and speakers and preachers. Like, I love all those people, and some of them are insanely inspiring, and I do love a lot of those people. But, like, just because you're up on the stage doesn't mean... I guess that was the point. I was like, you mean I just did this, and all these people saw it, and I inspired all these people, and I'm still, like, totally messed up and I don't know anything about anything you know and that was sort of the realization to me like the peek behind the curtain like um you know I was like just because I'm on a stage and a lot of people are singing my songs does not make me spiritual Mm -hmm. I was like I gotta I gotta figure out who God is Mm. you know yeah (laughs) no I feel that (laughs) That was a little bit of the beginning of my journey yeah I, I I feel like when I when I, I really my kind of sort of spiritual you know kind of journey really started in 2003 2004 and part of like the charismatic prayer movement mm-hmm. and part of what was so exciting about it was I was at this evangelical church that felt pretty tame and like a club like a like a you know Sunday club and all of a sudden there was this whole other world that was there was rallying and people were gathering in thousands and there was and it had all this energy and I think. I, I feel like I got recruited into it. Like, come in and be, mm-hmm. like, join the army. Like, get, there was like mm-hmm. a, and I got enlisted. Yeah. And then, and my friends did it, it had, there was all this language that was so big. Like you were saying, it was like this urgency. Yeah. Urgency. And you have a role to play and your life, like, live your life and, and have it matter and count for God. Yeah. And then the, I feel like events became the glue to hold that energy together, those big rallies. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I I feel like when I think of my journey, I the call to Nashville was sort of the the I don't know like the magic that magic spell felt like it it fell apart. Like I kind of walked away going, wow. man, I I've, I've been fasting for thirty days. I lost all this weight and I'm like sick and and I still feel just like the same kid. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I don't know that. I, I after that moment, I I walked away going. I gotta figure this out with my with my friends, where I could mm-hmm. just where there's no mics and like we could just sit yeah. and talk and I don't know that, that just felt like an important moment. So I'm I'm curious to know how our our sort of journeys in a way were seemed like there was some similar thing happening in 2007. I don't know. Yeah, that is really interesting. That's way interesting. But you know, there's that like I thought we're gonna change the Christian music industry. Yeah. We're gonna cross over and we're yeah. gonna win the whole world. You know, and I think, yeah, like um, that sort of language is sort of uh, lost on me now. Yeah, you know. Oh, the like, mountain. Remember I, the mountains, the influence. The mountains. Yeah. So the mountains of influence. Yeah, I got. Okay, I've so, had many conversations about that. So <laughs> here's oh, here, okay. If we can, I've got a song. I'm writing a song about that. By the way. No, we. I want to talk about the mountains because yes. I think the mountains were such a powerful metaphor when you're yeah. a kid. You're 20. Because you want to be on one of those yeah. mountains because that's what feels right to your flesh. Look, I'm yeah, going like, to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be wicked for God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to crush people for Christ. <laughs> it's like just climb the mountain. Uh, just, yeah. just stand up there and own it. And, yeah. But, but, <laughs> but it felt, well, I think what's so sneaky about that was 
that that's what we want. But then the yeah, our, yeah. a lot of the leaders were sort of like, come on, dream bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're not going to just be a worship leader at your podunk church. You're going to cross over to secular radio and win the world. You know? And I know. Like, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like. I didn't understand. Because they're really begging to hear the, like, <laughs> get weak with Jesus over there. <laughs> they're really begging to hear the take up your cross message, yeah. you know, in between Savage and whatever Post Malone is singing about. Right, right. You know what I mean? But, but I think I'm, I'm curious because I hear it in your music, your new, your come down from your mountain, mm -hmm. th this, this idea of God coming down the mountain. And yeah. I feel this, we've been talking within our friends of, Wow, like I feel like there's this. Pa Richard Rohr talks about it, the path of descent. Like yeah. there's, it's not, pop, it's not pop culture. It's not sexy. It's it's not doesn't have a sheen. It's it's like going down you know, into the valleys. And I don't know. I'm, I'm just curious to hear jump like go, we were in 2007, 2020. You're writing about it. Something something has happened in this span. Yeah. And I don't know. I just want to poke at it and figure out what, what yeah. what's going on. Oh man. Dude, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. I think, man, I have some friends who'd be better equipped to have this conversation than me. But so, like, I've got a friend who says this, the kingdom that comes, or the kingdom, uh, <laughs> the way the kingdom comes is the kingdom that comes, right? Hang on one second. You can hang out with us, baby girl? Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Try not to make any noise, okay? Here, just let over. Here we go, here we go. Join the All webinar. Right. <laughs> Come but, on. Uh, the, the, the way a kingdom comes is the kingdom it's, that comes, right? So if you have to bring peace by the sword, then are you bringing the kingdom of peace? Right. right. No, you're bringing the kingdom of war. You know, if you got to bring the kingdom, <laughs> you know, if, if what you do to survive kills the things you love, then fear is a powerful thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's kind of like um, the problem with the mountains, the problem with the seven mountains, and I'm probably going to get people to be mad at me who were probably smarter than me. But the problem with the seven mountains is that they are, um, they're all, um, <laughs> you know, the, the Jesus way is the coming down from the mountain. You know, the gods of Olympus don't care about humanity mm -hmm. you know but jesus is not the god who stands on top of the mountains of power jesus is the god who steps down yeah. you know and so i'm all about success don't get me wrong right. i want to be successful i want like twenty thousand people at my concerts like i'm not right. joking you know what i'm saying but at the same time do i think that that's more spiritual than what i'm doing now or what i was doing right when i was 20 or no not at all Right. You know, because there's certain compromises you make for success that maybe, oh gosh, this is a really nuanced conversation. <laughs> there are really important, powerful people who do really good things, right. you know, no, I, but I guess, I guess here's my point is that, that we were the, the mountain thing. All of a sudden it empowers these ideas that actually need to break in you. You know, there's certain things that like, I don't need to be powerful. I don't need to be wealthy. I don't need to be right. any of these things to be, uh, to have an impact right. on the world. Not in a way that matters. Yeah, well, that's if the my, nuance is yeah. you, you can be, but you don't need to be. Exactly. Right. That's you, the you, nuance. You, you can be with 20,000 people, you know, and it's great. But I think there's always that whisper, come down the mountain. There's always, exactly. like, God's always like, hey, that's great. Like, have fun. Like, live mm -hmm. in a, you know, live it <laughs> up. But, like, I don't know. I, I feel... I. I missed that nuance as a kid, and that's okay. It just has been a long time, yeah. just a process, and I'm craving all the nuance. I'm cra I heard yeah. a quote from, t uh, tyranny is the deliberate removal of nuance. Wow. And that just got me, I think about it all the time, and I'm craving that this space where we can talk, where I can talk with people, any, anybody, yeah. where we can f sit and feel that tension. Uh, yeah. And look back and-, Daddy, and <laughs> it's complicated. It's I know yeah. it looks like he's muted, but it's mm -hmm. <laughs> um anyways, there's gonna be more. We can but um yeah. I I was thinking yeah. before we go, yeah, um yeah. 
we got some people on here. Yep. Brock, do you? Uh, yeah. We want to see if we can just have a little question QA time just to see if this conversation has like dug up anything. I do have some questions yeah. I could just say out from uh, from our attendees here. Yeah, I'd love it. Let's yeah. do it. Do you want to try to pipe them in? Is that too complicated? Just I to haven't got a response to anybody. Okay, if you, if cool. You see, if you see that I've messaged you okay. on... Um, Let's see. Yes, yeah, so if you All see right. that I've sent you a message on Zoom, then you can just respond to that and then maybe... Did you send me one or just look <laughs> at the chat? I've sent a couple people an invite. Um, we got one here. Trying to see here. Uh, I would be willing to go live. Whitney, there we yeah. go. Okay. Pipe her in. Let's see if this works. Whitney, All if right. you're ready, um, just... <laughs> So Whitney, if you're ready, just enable your audio and video, and then I'll pipe you in here in a second, and you can ask your question. Trying to break the the other into the other dimension. <laughs> um, I don't. Um, yeah, here we go. All right, I'm going to gallery mode. Mm -hmm. I so I sent you an invite, Whitney. If you just accept that. Okay, looks like I'm here. Great. Can we get your video as well? Yes. I'm All right. Okay. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Great. So my question on the chat was, how did you um, sort through the questions in your faith when you realized you got to the point where you wanted to go on your own faith journey? Can you hear me okay? Oops, I could hear the beginning of that, but you're really quiet. So oh. I heard, oh, there you are. Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Um, my question was, how did you go about uh, starting your own faith journey when you realized you wanted to break away and dig deeper on your own? What were some ways that you grew in your faith at that point? Um, so I don't know that I knew I wanted to break away. I just knew that I felt out of place. You know, that was really the initial, my initial feeling was I felt out of place and I spent years trying to find my place. And I, I came to this conclusion that home is not something you find as much as home is something you build, you know? And so for me, <laughs> sorry. sorry guys. Hey guys, go with your mama. There's nothing fun to do. I know, we'll find something fun. We'll find something fun. <laughs> Literally nothing fun. Speaks for, <laughs> speaks for all of us. Nothing fun to do. <laughs> True. Then, um, so for me it was a process. I think I had to, um, I had to be okay with not knowing things. You know? And honestly, I had to kind of break it all down. It's like, what am I doing here in life, right? You know, and I've had this sort of existential angst since I was a kid, you know. And so, um, gosh, this is such a huge question, <laughs> you know. And it's been a, it's been a, almost a fifteen year journey for me, you know. So, so it I think more than a lot anything, of things over time. Yeah. Well, gosh, what am I trying to say? is it's uh, it's not one it's not one thing it's been a process i know that sounds like a cliche but it's been a process but i think for me more than anything it's been embracing the process being okay with not knowing you know and um i just don't have a really good single answer <laughs> that's okay sometimes it's not easy you know? It's not like for me, like I landed on, I landed on gratitude is where I landed, mm. you know, and I got to this point. Okay. So if I'm going to be really, really honest, I got to this point. If Jesus is not who he says he is, I love Jesus anyway. Mm. Mm. You know, yeah. and here's why, here's why. Cause number one, I am obsessed. I'm absolutely infatuated with the powers that led to my existence. You know, absolutely infatuated. And the only way to celebrate that, in my opinion, is to see those powers, those forces in other human beings. You know, and to appreciate those. And I realized after a while, it's like, 
those are the two pillars of Christianity. <laughs> love God and love your neighbor. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it was like, you know, like on my worst days, on my, wor- on my best days, God is my best friend and I can live like that. On my worst days, um, loving God, whoever he is, is the best way to live life. Mm-hmm. You know? And um, so I found a spectrum <laughs> that I can live in honestly, mm. live within honestly. And I'm not denying any of those things. I'm not denying, you know, like I'm, I'm a believer. I believe in the afterlife. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the resurrection. I believe in all those things because I choose to. I have no proof for any of those things. But I do know that that is at all my worst days, I'm saying. On my worst days, just posturing myself in that way is just an incredible way to live. Mm-hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, we're talking about unknowns. It's literally what we're talking about is the unknown. And right. Faith operates only in faith operates only in the realm of the unknown right exclusively kind of a posture of humility and trust yeah totally Mm -hmm. totally because faith there is no faith for something i know you know but all of life involves faith like when i get out of bed in the morning i can either believe that life is going to be terrible, that life is going to be good. And if I believe that life is going to be good, it doesn't guarantee that my life is going to be incredible, but it does guarantee that my life will be better than if I got out of bed and didn't believe that. Yeah. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to reduce Christianity down to positive thinking. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm devout, or I try to be (laughs) devout (laughs) believer. But at the end of the day, like, Worst case scenario, loving the powers that led to my existence and my sisters and brothers is got to be the best way to live. Mm -hmm. You know? So there you have it. That's my, that's my spectrum of faith right there. I live in that sweet spot. I live in Mm. that Goldilocks zone. Mm. Thanks for sharing. Love that dude. I guess too, the last thing I'll say is life is a spectrum. Yeah. And you have to figure out what's what frequency you're going to live on mm-hmm. how how low you're willing to go and how high you you can maintain you know as i used to think i'm going to reach this spot and that's going to be it it's not true you're yeah, like going back changing. to a spiritual high from the past or something yeah and I, it's easy to think of yourself as a static being when the truth is like you're constantly changing even if you think about your body like i don't know how often your cells regenerate but at 40 i probably don't have any of the same physical cells that i did when i was born i'm literally a different thing you know what i'm saying i'm literally a different thing my physical body is literally not what it was when i was born you know and so you're spiritually you're the same way like you're a different thing you're constantly changing so it's about posture it's about the direction you're facing not about where you're standing you know Anyway, that's kind of the way I look at it. Hmm. That's great. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Good question. You challenged me. This is. Do we? Do we want to do any? Anybody else want to be brave and jump on? Yeah. There's something about seeing somebody ask the question versus just on a chat that makes it way more like we're all just hanging out. So thanks that's for Whitney. Whitney, thanks, thanks, thanks for Whitney. being being bold. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's check it out. I think. BJ had an interesting question. Let's see if we can get him on. Come on, BJ. Where are you? <laughs> Let's try this here. BJ, if you're listening, I sent you an invite on Zoom. <laughs> I like what you said about the, the spectrum. I mean, that captures... Hey. Oh wow! Look. Hey, hey. <laughs> is your is your yeah. can you enable your audio, BJ? <laughs> yeah. I so I was meeting with a bunch of high schoolers last night, and it's my favorite thing to mess with the background. And uh, <laughs> as you should. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great. Yeah. Is that Hogwarts? Is <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some good ones. Yeah, lots of good ones. <laughs> uh, I was wondering what was going to be behind me. Guys, thanks for doing this. Um, 
John, my, my question for you is, I love seeing your kids pop in uh, throughout this whole video. I've, I've got four kids that have been, you guys couldn't see it, but obviously coming in and interrupting <laughs> and stuff. So how have you, it, it's been interesting, very just weird trying to explain this whole situation to, to my kids. They're um, 10, 7, 6, and 5, something like that, close to that. Um, so just... I don't know. They, they just don't get it. Why, why does grandma and grandpa, when they come over, you know, and they're standing in the driveway, why do we have to stay away from them? Why can't we hug them? Um, you know, just the whole situation in general. So how, how have you kind of talked to your kids about that? Um, we just sort of, you know, tried to share the facts with them, you know, like there's this virus and, you know, you get sick and it's really hard on grandparents, you know, and, um, and so we want to like stay away from them, but it's been tough, you know, like, like wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, make sure you wash your hands, you know, mm -hmm. Don't touch so, that anyway. I know. Yeah. So they, they think they understand it, you know, that just hasn't affected their, like the way they do anything, you know? And so like they, they talk about it, you know, I think more than anything, they just, they miss seeing their friends and they miss seeing the people they love. They're pretty extroverted kids you know and um so like as, as far as the like understanding it my kids are 11 uh eight and seven and uh so they think they understand it but they don't they don't understand it practically you know they understand why but they still want to go down to grandma's house yeah <laughs> you know so explaining it hasn't been so difficult but like um enforcing our sort of <laughs> yes <laughs> our um, our program has been the challenge <laughs> yeah I appreciate it yeah we've been having the same difficulties with a few very extroverted kids that like to hmm. touch and hug and yeah I know well my our big uh, honestly our biggest issue has been media because they just want to be on Fortnite all day <laughs> You know. Who doesn't? <laughs> I know. I do. <laughs> I know. You know how many kills I could have by now? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for your question, man. Yeah, thank you. Well, John Mark, you got, I hear your tribe up yes. there. Are they ready for you to take you to the, to the field? The yep. natives are restless. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next time yes. we'll, we can we can jump into questions a little sooner. I, I think I got a little long winded, so I don't <laughs> Me know. Too. I kind of got lost in a space for a second. Well, I forgot the forgot the clock. Uh, but dude, this this was yeah. fun, man. Well, this I, is fun. I think uh, I think we could do this again. No, oh. I'd love to, man. Just let me know anytime. Okay. All right, man. Well, um, yeah, we'll we'll be texting. Yeah. So awesome. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> Peace. See you. See you, everybody. Okay. See you next week. <laughs>